Who, who, who knew that tonight was the two year anniversary of Comedy at Mojo's? For those of you that didn't know, uh, tonight is the two year anniversary of Comedy at Mojo's. You guys are still excited, that's exciting. Uh, I am Tom, I'm your host. I kind of host this uh, twice a month, sometimes I need other people to host it. It's exciting. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're, it's awesome that we've been doing this for two years. God damn it, Clay. Sorry. Guys, that's Clay. He's going to be telling jokes later. Uh, but yeah, this is, this is fun. I'm kind of nervous. I don't know why. This is, we normally do it on that side. This side is way bigger. And there's way more people and it's lighter and I can see all your ugly faces. I just don't know what's going on. Oh, jeez. But uh, yeah, so this is two years. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We have all of my favorite Richmond comics performing tonight. Uh, hopefully you all like them too. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna start off with a couple of rules because every good thing has rules like America. Uh, first of all, keep table talk to a minimum. That's just rude when we're up here trying to entertain everyone. Uh, uh, and then the, really the only other rule is just tip your bar staff. They're working super hard, making sure you are hydrated and fed. So, give them a lot of money at the end of the night. Um, I, I am Tom Hall. I'm your host for the evening. I am from Richmond, Virginia. I worked at Mojo's for about two years in high school. Uh, being from Richmond, you see a lot of things. Especially when you're walking down the street. Uh, you see a lot of chicken bones. And that's exciting. Just everywhere. It's kind of annoying. You guys know it. Um, my dog likes to eat them, and it's very bothersome. But a couple a couple weeks ago, Virginia decided to legalize uh, medical cannabis extract for children with epilepsy, and I thought that was amazing. I was, I was so happy. It's just forward progression. It's great. Uh, and on that day, I was walking my dog Larry, and I saw a Brussels sprout on the ground, and all I could think about, holy shit. Virginia's progressed so fast in just one day. <laughs> Another thing about my dog is I, I used to live in an apartment where I had to pay a pet fee, but I didn't because I didn't want to. And then my refrigerator broke and my landlord came in and he was like, hey, you have a dog. You know you're supposed to be paying for that, right? And I was like, yeah, I'll start doing that. And then as soon as he left, I sat my dog down, Larry, and I was like, dude, you gotta buckle down. You gotta get a job. You gotta help pay pay your bills. You know, I have a drinking and drug problem. I can't do it all by myself. And he was totally cool with it. He went to school, Virginia Tech, 2014. Go Hokies. They pay me to say that. Uh, and he was this close to becoming a scientist, and he just couldn't choose between a yellow lab coat or a chocolate lab coat. <laughs> Does anyone live in Shaco Bottom? Yeah, Shaco Bottom's the worst. Every time I go down there, I feel like I have to like pack my bags, kiss my family goodbye, and then I like write them when I get there, and then I get home later that night and I receive a letter to myself in the mail, just telling them about all my experiences that night. Uh, I live with my parents now. It's weird. I live with my super Christian aunt too. She's there. She always complains about being how she's too overworked, and I'm like, you don't have a job, all you do is the kitty litter once a week. <laughs> and that's like the worst thing about living with my parents. The coolest thing though is, my mom and I have this deal worked out, where she can eat all of my candy as long as I can smoke all of her weed. <laughs> my dad doesn't like it, but it's just because he can't smoke weed because his job is lame. You guys ever smell your own cum? Yeah! On your own breath? It's nothing too weird. I just like to breathe into jars and then come into them and then take really deep breaths. Gotcha. You guys, are you guys ready for your first comic of the evening? He is a very excellent dude. He has helped me a lot with comedy and he's even hosted a couple of nights here at Mojo's and he runs his own room over at Home Sweet Home in Carytown every first and third Wednesday. His name is Jacob McFadden. Yeah! 
The recorder thing's recording. Sorry, this is called stage prep. I gotta get up here and do a little housework, okay? The recorder's recording. Um, the gels are on the lights. Uh, there's a blue Toyota in the lot over there. It's gonna get towed. Doesn't have a pass. Blue Toyota. That's how you pronounce it, by the way. I'm Japanese. <laughs> Hi. Thank you. I mean, origato, 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 origato. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Hey! Uh, great, thanks, Tom, for starting to show off. All that energy, perfect thing for me to jump right into. Feels good. A little Quaalude comedy to start the night, huh? How do you like that as a drug reference that's older than everyone who's in the audience combined? It's a drug from the 70s that people would use to rape girls in hot tubs. Your dad loved them. Ask him about it. Bowie has three songs about them. Why start that way? Hey, everyone in this room has fully developed human teeth, right? Yeah! And am, am I right? Folks, we got something to agree on here. We got fully developed human teeth. Probably used to call them baby teeth, right? And you lost those shits, they grew up, right? Am I right? All right, hold on, I'm gonna get into the crowd. I'm gonna mix it up. You said baby teeth? What? <laughs> Sorry, that is fair. I did shout that at you. The question was, did you used to have baby teeth? Absolutely. I used to have them too, you know what I mean? Yeah! I used to have baby teeth. I lost my first tooth. At some point when I was younger, I don't know what that was. I'm getting snappy now! I lost a tooth when I was four. Right? And I grew up in Florida, and, and I lost this tooth, and when we lose a tooth in school, they put it in a little plastic treasure chest, and then we put it in our desk. Um, and then, you know, you go to recess or whatever. But to show you how good the schools are in Florida, during recess, I snuck back in, right? And I went through the other desk, because some other kid had lost his tooth. And I stole his little plastic chest with his tooth in it. Because I knew tooth equals money, Money is that shit my dad says we never have, so I can't have anything I want. So if I get money, I can get stuff. So I steal this kid's suit. <laughs> you guys are laughing like that's weird, but that's a normal thing kids do, is they steal human teeth and bring them home and pass them off as their own. Good enough for Kesha, good enough for me. <laughs> you don't know that. Kesha has her fans send her their teeth and then she makes jewelry out of them. Uh, if everyone wants to pull their phone out and Google it, I'll wait. You can tell me you've done it with a collective, ew! Uh, she made a crown and a bra out of human teeth. Uh, 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 she's in a lawsuit right now, we shouldn't talk about her. So I go home and I tell my mother I lost this tooth. Just puts it on your pillow, I put it under my pillow, I get a nice quarter in the morning going downstairs, eating my cereal, and my mother is sitting on the other end of the table, and she's just staring into my mouth the whole time. She's just staring. And she goes, you didn't lose no goddamn tooth! You go to school, you give that kid his money back. Well, I could have died. How embarrassing. <laughs> go into class and I'm like, Jason, I, uh, hey bud, <clears throat> let's your tooth. And I gotta give you this cash back. My mom says I have to give you this money. So I give him the quarter and the kid looks at me and he says, where's the rest of it? <laughs> so I realized we were poor. <laughs> it's a hell of a way to learn a lesson. Speaking of socioeconomic indicators, you guys into criminal justice reform? Yeah. Yeah? Oh yeah, it's a bipartisan movement, huh? I believe on it here on earth and I believe in it in hell. If you read the Bible, hell's full of a lot of nonviolent masturbators. I say it's time to release them. Make room for the really bad guys. To like those who get abortion or practice gay marriage. I don't know. There's other sins that you can send people to hell for. And there's a lot of masturbators taking up space. <laughs> Trump, Trump, Trump. <laughs> Wrong room? I don't, I don't know. 
I, I, uh, I really, I've been betting on the election, but I made a bad bet last uh, summer. I, I thought Jeb Bush was going to be the nominee. I wrote so many fucking Jeb Bush jokes. <laughs> hey, you remember this guy's brother, huh? A lot of stuff that starts like that. Just uh, loud declarations, remember that guy's brother? <laughs> he was asked if uh, he would kill baby Hitler, and he said, Hell yeah, man, gotta do your part. I agree with the sentiment, but it does show why he didn't do well in the polls. Jeb, you're a Republican, they're pro-life. You see, because you kill a baby, that would mean you are a pro-choice person. Be able to really explain a joke when it doesn't work, it also doesn't work, but now I've spent more time on it. I will tell you what I like about this Donald J. Trump character. I'd never heard of him before. He gives. He gives these amazing, like, three-hour speeches, and he has no script, so it's all improvised. But he gets, he fills auditoriums. I want to be able to do that. I want to be, like, the Richmond comic version of Donald Trump. I want to, I want to come out, I just want to tell jokes that are so good. Like these other comics you're gonna see tonight, they're not funny, they're idiots. They're not funny at all. We need funny comics in this city. Not idiots like that. Tom Hall sucks. Yeah, yeah, you're right, she said Tom Hall sucks. Uh, he's a nice guy, he's a good guy. He's a, he's a, you know, but he's a loser, and he's not very funny. When I get in, I'm gonna make jokes that are so good. You're gonna be tired of laughing at my jokes. Mexicans are rapists. <laughs> You're gonna be tired of laughing at my jokes. I'm gonna win at comedy again. <laughs> Which would imply I had lost it for a while. I should probably write this down. This new policy proposal, but is it a policy? Yeah, my, my policy proposal is that jokes will be funny in my America. Oh boy, I, uh, I, you guys ever think being sick to get out of school? Well, I said this uh, kid in my class who, like, a new game came out and he wanted to go home, so I was like, I just eat some grass. <laughs> and he ate the grass. He threw up. So far, I'm mission accomplished, right? Threw up on the side of the trailer we had a class in. Like I said, not very rich growing up. But the teacher was there, and he saw him throw up. And he was like, no, go in there. You're being ridiculous. I can't believe you ate grass. What the fuck is wrong with you? Get in there. You're going to learn history. So he sit through the class, and after class, he's like, dude, that didn't work. I was like, I got another idea. Eat some more grass. <laughs> you just throw up. This, dude, we're out of his class now. He's in there. We're out here. Eat some more grass. So he ate some grass. And guess what? He threw up. And a teacher was walking by and went, Oh my God, you need to go to the nurse. You need to go home. You're feeling very sick. That's right when the history professor stepped out of the, the trailer. And she was like, Oh my God, did you know this young man's sick? He just threw up. And the history professor said, Look in the vomit. There's chewed grass in the vomit. He's eating grass. So we're probably get the fuck out of there go to class. Smash cut two hours later. He comes up to me in the cafeteria. It's lunchtime. He's like, man, I'm just giving up. I think I'm stuck here today. And guess what? Cruel twist of fate. I'm feeling a little sick. I think it's from eating all that grass. I said, I feel you, man. But look, don't give up. I got a plan. Go outside. Get some grass. And then... Eat the grass! Yeah, I should have told you it was an audience participation bit. That's my fault. <laughs> so we go to that side. He eats the grass. And he throws up. Wouldn't you know who's the lunch monitor that day? The motherfucking history teacher. Who comes over and he says, What is wrong with you? This is the third time today you've eaten grass and thrown up. And I'm cracking up. This has never happened before. I went, you, McFadden, office, now. 
I had to go to the office because this dumb fat kid kept eating grass to go home. Do you know what that phone call to my mother was like? Mrs. McFadden, uh, your son is encouraging retarded children to eat grass. <laughs> There's no defense. I keep like, no, nah, mom, you don't understand. He's, I mean, yeah, he's eating grass, but he's totally mentally, he's just as developed as me, as, as others, as not as, as anyone. There's nothing wrong with him except that he eats grass. <laughs> but it's not as. Can I be suspended instead of in school detention? Because I really hate that shit. Oh, is that my time, Tommy? Is that a thumbs up? What does that mean? Did I get to live? No lions? Fuck Detroit, am I right? Yes. Uh, that was Jacob McFadden, guys. Yeah. How about it? Let's, let's applaud for him if you want. Uh, your next comic is one of the most joyful motherfuckers I've ever met. He's a member of Rich Girls Comedy, and he makes me laugh every time. His name is Brandon Beswick. If you see he, if you, if you, if you see a faded sign at the side of the road, that means 15 miles to the love shack. <laughs> love shack, baby. I'm driving down the Atlanta highway, heading for a love, a love getaway. Looking for a love getaway. I've got me a Chrysler. That just happens to seat about 20. So guys, why don't you hurry up and just come on. Bring all your jukebox money. Glitter on the highway. Glitter on the mattress. Glitter on the back porch. I don't know, guys. Hi, I'm Brandon. How the fuck is everybody doing? Oh, uh, we just shared a love shack moment. That happened to all of us. And tell your parents about that. Guys, uh, I recently found a new app. It's called Grinder. Not 100% sure what it's for, but I've been meeting hella nice dudes. Uh, they've been paying for all my drinks, which is just so sweet. But I found this out about myself. Uh, Kahlua really makes my butt sore. Um, could be just me, lactose thing. Uh, guys, I always hear that vegans are super accepting. Like, really accepting people. Right? But you know what they're not accepting of? Trans. Um, fats. <laughs> At all. Wordies, they're not too fine of transcontinental railroads either. Listen, it's up to you. You're just a railroad. Guys, do you ever get stuck in group text? I'm gonna do most of my set like this because this is Richmond and I feel like this is artistic as fuck. Um, <laughs> guys, I love wearing sweatpants because it allows my penis to express a wider range of emotions. <laughs> Exclamate sentences. It's really the divining rod of the human body. Um, but do you guys ever get stuck in group text? That ever happened to you guys? Right? Here's a simple fix for that. Uh, take a selfie on the toilet, uh, and then put the caption, Is anyone else pooping right now? <laughs> They'll start a new group text without you, don't you worry. <laughs> If that didn't work, just hit him with the Trump shit. Hey, did anyone see that last comic's hands? They were unbelievably tiny. Was that, did anyone else notice that? It's weird, Jacob, you should get that checked out. Um, I was recently speaking to a group of epileptics. It was great. Slipped up, reminded them to seize the day. Ugh. On me. Sorry. Guys, I used to own a puppy mill. 
Turns out no one wants ground puppy. Oh, <laughs> uh, if you don't laugh at that, Michael Vick wins. 757 for life! Yeah! <laughs> Dogs can't feel feelings. Dogs can't feel feelings. Yes, Mike, they can. Got real for a second. Dog rights, am I right? No, shut up. Everyone just stop. Just stop watching. <laughs> Nonsense. I, uh, I bought my dog. It feels really terrible to say, but I did, so... <laughs> Whatever. Guys, ah, I feel like the Bible, especially the first few books in the Bible, uh, read like a text message thread from your dad <laughs> about a deck he built <laughs> that you really just don't care about. Like, we, uh, we dug some holes in the backyard and put some posts in them. Great, Dad. On the next day, uh, we throw some quick cream in there and let them dry. <laughs> Dad, that's fine. And then the day after that, we laid some planks out for the deck. Then we stained the deck the next day. No gays are allowed on the deck. Just try to sneak some biblical craziness by me, deck dad? Yes, I did. No milk and meat on the same plate on the deck. Um, <laughs> you can sell your daughter on the deck. Uh, okay, dad, don't do this. I'm gonna have you kill your brother on this deck. Dad, stop. I love you, man, it's cool. When, uh, when I see young couples that do old couple things, it pisses me off, right? If I see a young couple and the guy's like, honey, do I like that? I'm like, fuck you, dude. You need to know what you like. Now, if you see an older couple doing that, it's sweet. You're like, oh man, he probably doesn't remember if he likes that. That's cute. But I guess like the same is like if you flip it, right? So if, if you hear like an older couple being like an old, older man with his wife, like, yes, she's my first wife. <laughs> Like, oh, that's sweet. If you see like an angry 30-year-old man drunk at the bar with his wife, he's like, yeah, this is my first wife. Like, Ooh. Tone it down, guy. Because the same too, like you don't want to hear your nana talking about pegging. You're like, I told you to stop. How did you get the HBO Go account? Log in. You're not allowed to watch girls. Nana, um. That Leanne Dunham's a bad influence on you. You've been real weird with your sister lately. <laughs> Every time I see a white girl with dreads on Tinder, I uh, always try to match with them, right? Because they're bound to make more terrible decisions in their life. <laughs> this one weighs 350 pounds. Loves to cuddle, hates to be the big spoon. Those are truths, so just deal with it. Do what you will. Oh, man. Um, I'm really into weird porn. To be getting weirder and weirder. I was into just Eskimo kissing for a while. Now I'm into Eskimo bukkake. If you don't know, it's when six dudes stand around one girl and just sneeze on her a bunch. Inuit bukkake, I apologize. I do apologize. It's on me. <sighs> Guys, okay. So, uh, bear with me, because this is new, but I love you, and we're gonna try this. Um, so, at the gun show, there's a fucking circus. Anyone notice that? There's a gun show on Laburnum right now at the Richmond International Raceway. Surprise. <laughs> and there apparently is a traveling circus that follows this gun show across the nation. And I'm like, all right, what kind of asshole is this for? Like, what kind of dick's like, listen, I want to go buy guns at the gun show, but my fucking toddler is terrible. I wish there was a place I could just drop them off and then go inside and buy a bunch of guns to kill my family with. It's like, I know you may not be pro, pro choice, but leaving your young children unattended at a gun show is no form of birth control. That's just not a form of birth control. That's how jugglers are created. You have to be abducted at a gun show circus as a toddler. <laughs> then you are a juggler. 
have a, a strange taste for Fanta. And everyone's a ninja. Um, there are Asian t-shirts right now. Asian Brandon, that's good. Don't you know anything about that? It's a whole continent, you fucking idiot. Anyway, there's people in countries in Asia right now uh, that are wearing shirts that have English words on them that say horrible things like bitch and ass and cunt. Uh, and they have no idea what they say. I heard about this and I was like, well, you know what? Damn straight. That's revenge for all those goddamn trans tramp stamps from the late 90s that probably said things like whore or uh, blessed butthole. Um, <laughs> get tested, it says in Korean. Surprise. Did I sing Love Shack? Did we do the Love Shack thing? Good, good. Um, Alright, well, you know what? I would definitely die in a mass shooting. Right? I'm overweight, so I'm a bigger target. I'm slow moving. I'm like super charismatic and I got a lot going on for me. Uh, and apparently those are all the criteria to die in a mass shooting. Like for once I'd love to turn on the news and it's like, eight dead in Galveston today. One of the victims' names was Michael. Michael was a real piece of shit. He used to sell shitty weed out of his mom's conversion van and never paid child support. Burn in hell, Michael. <laughs> Back to you, Karen. That's right. Michael had 14 girlfriends that got pregnant because of bloop, 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 bloop. Never had a vasectomy. All right, um, I'll leave you guys with this. Do you guys think that Hitler had a regular mustache before like his first really big speech? And he's like, aunt, I have to shave my mustache. Uh, I don't look good for this speech. He's like, okay, let me trim on this side. Now let me trim on this side. Oh no, it's uneven. Let me trim on this side. Now on this side. Oh, it's uneven on this side, on this side, on this side, on this side. And like Goebbels like breaks and like, Psh! Oh, Hitler, we have to get to the speech now. And Hitler's like, look at my mustache. It's, it's so uh, tiny and unkempt. What are we doing? And Goebbels is like, grab your boots, baby. It's time for speech. <laughs> They like haul ass to wherever, I don't know, wherever the racist shit happened. And uh, he just like give a killer speech, right? Like everyone's loving it. Like people are like, oh, you know, this guy's got some pretty good ideas, which he does not. Which he did and does not. All right, let's just clear that up. Uh. Then he goes home and he's like, oh, I crushed it. I crushed it tonight. You know, I think I'm gonna keep the mustache. It looks pretty good. People seem to like it. Just think, guys, if he had more time, he could be dealing with like a goatee situation or something. But instead, uh, Michael Jordan's the only one who's allowed to rock that mustache. Anyway, I've been Brandon. You guys have been a lot of fun. Uh, Tom is your host. Guys, there's a bunch of great comics, so get excited. You're going to have a lot of fun. Get Tom back up here. Yeah! Guys, that's Brandon. Yeah, very, very funny guy. Are we having fun? Yeah. Sounds like it. I like it. The lights are having fun. They're doing weird things. I don't know if you guys have noticed them, but I have. It's been stressing me out. That's all right. That's the PCP. Guys, your next comic. Uh, very cool girl. Very funny. She is the host. Uh, she does a show at Crossroads over at Forest Hill. That is something you can check out next Thursday. It's going to be great. Alex Hill's on that show. He's also on this show, so you know it's going to be good. Her name is Sarah Ahmed. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hi. Tom Hall, putting on a fucking great show. Yeah. Yeah, that you guys are all a part of. So, um, let's just dump, jump right into some, some sexy stuff, all right? You guys uh, heard about Brussels, right? There's some... Tricked ya. Tricked ya. Um, yeah, there, there were uh, some terrorist attacks today. It's, uh, Pretty, pretty fucked up. Um, ISIS has claimed responsibility, uh, but thankfully there was a, a brief moment of silence before Donald Trump said something Islamophobic. So that was that was really touching for me. Um, yeah. So I mean, are we are we panicked at all about about Mr. Trump? 
Are we are we there yet? Or are we gonna just I'm fucking terrified, you guys. <laughs> um <laughs> I, I mean, I think I'm going to move to Canada. I don't know if you guys are going to go with me. Sarah Palin said she's going to move to Canada as well. Not if Trump's elected, she just wants to move to a new continent. <laughs> she's so whimsical, you guys. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, actually, my, my dad is Muslim. 50% um, of my family is Muslim. And my calculations are correct. That makes about 50% of you uncomfortable right now. <laughs> That's good. You're laughing. That means you're relaxing a little bit. <laughs> no, but, but my dad's Muslim. My mom is Christian. Uh, so by default, that makes me uh, a juggalo. <laughs> they needed protection. They were in, in, in an interracial relationship. And, in West Virginia, you guys. No, um, by default, I, I, I'm atheist. So, um, but you know, my parents, they did some compromising raising me. Like, for example, we celebrated Christmas, but all the presents were labeled to Sarah from Muslim Santa, <laughs> which was cute. Um, and like, you know, on Easter, the Easter Bunny was always always served with a side of musa'a. So good. So fucking good. Um, yeah, but my mom's from West Virginia, and my dad is from Alexandria, Egypt. Um, so that makes me a mistake, obviously. My, my parents are, are really cool. But when I, when I tell people that I'm from West Virginia, they, they kind of silently wait for me to, to shape shift into like an inbred cannibal, you know? But uh, I'm telling you, I'm a real girl with all my teeth, and my cousins are not my type. Because they're my cousins. Okay, that's disgusting. <laughs> no, they're just not hot enough. Um, yeah, but Easter's coming up, so I guess this is relevant. Do you guys believe in uh, aliens? Woo! Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Do you believe in love? Yeah. <laughs> Me either. I don't know what I'm looking for in a guy anymore. Anyone here single? Anyone? You have any preferences? What are you looking for? You don't fucking know. Yeah, that's why we're single. I get. I know. I think at one point I wanted someone that was spontaneous, right? Now I just want someone that doesn't have syphilis yeah. or a gluten intolerance. Those, those two things are equally common in Richmond. Yeah. And I'll fucking date someone with celiac disease, okay? Because they're not full of shit. Bring it on. Okay, cool. Sweet. Note to the other comics. Alright, celiac is a hit. Um... Anyone believe in pickup lines? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, I'll give you a couple of mine. Feel free to use them. Um, hey, boy. Oh. I'm more broken than our justice system. You want to go out? That one crushes at Bernie Sanders rallies. Here's another one. Um, damn, boy. Trying to smash your recycling so we can make more room in that recycling bin. Eventually, reduce waste in landfills. No? Fuck you guys for not recycling. Third one is um, hey boy, I've got weed. Um, that's it, and that one works every time.
Um, you guys know the best time to get a breast exam? At the gynecologist, you're correct. Uh, second best time is uh, when you're hooking up with someone, you know? Because you can just be like, oh yeah, nipple play. Ooh, grab them. Now tell me, do you feel any dimpling? Any lumps? Do you see any... <laughs> are there any gummy bears or tortilla chips down there? It's been a long Tuesday. Can't wait for my next breast exam. Yeah. I actually had one yesterday. And a pap smear. Sucks. I would rather get a fucking pap smear every day than Donald Trump be elected president. I swear to God, I hate pap smears. By a homeless person while listening to Jacob McFadden do stand up. I don't know. <laughs> He's gone, right? <laughs> um, no, dating's hard because there's like a lot of standards I think women feel like they have to live up to. Um, and men too. Yeah, I'm sure. Whatever. But, you know, <laughs> for example, like my cousin, um, she got permanent fake eyelashes put on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's real, yeah. Um, yeah, so I sat her down and I was like, cuz, you know, why did you do that? What you needed was Botox. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> but uh, I took her to go get it, so, yeah. Happy 15th birthday. <laughs> I'm the best cousin ever. I know you guys. I'm going to get off here in a little bit. Um, my ex-boyfriend used to say, Sarah, I love you to the moon and back. Thank you. We're going to talk later, you and I. I was like, babe, you can't even love me to red box and back. What is this moon bullshit? Yeah. <laughs> I really like that guy. It's beating on the table laughing. Come on. Sorry. Let me pay attention to everyone else. Hey, you guys. What's the difference between the clit and Bigfoot? What? I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> People have seen Bigfoot. <laughs> yeah? Uh, <laughs> Communicate with each other. <laughs> you know how I send the message across to my boyfriend? Put the vibrator right on the charger, right in plain sight on my dresser. Every time he came over, he knew some competition. <laughs> Things are getting deep. Just kidding. It, it just skims the surface. <laughs> hey, I'm Sarah. I'm Sarah. You guys are great. Have a good night. Oh, Sarah, uh, she mentioned being a mistake, and, you know, we all make mistakes. I do, especially. I work in kitchens, and sometimes I'll make mistakes on purpose just so I can eat it. You know, eat your, eat your mistakes. But I'm glad not everyone does that, because then my dad would have had to eat me. Uh, yeah, you guys all know that feeling. Your next comic is my best friend in the whole wide world. I've known him for almost 20 years. He's in a cool rock and roll band called Dirt Merchant. You should check him out on the internet. Uh, you should also laugh at his jokes. His name is Jason Customer. He did it! Two years, guys! Give it up for Tom and everybody who's had to put up with this shit. Oh my God, give it up for your comics that you've seen tonight. JP behind the bar. JP, if you can hear me, I would like another beer. I didn't have time to order one before I got up. <laughs> I can't see him, which is so unusual. Uh, Sarah was talking about pickup lines, and hers were shitty. I got some real ones. Yo, girl, are we a city in Ohio? Because you and me should be dating. <laughs> Yo, girl, are you my appendix? 
thanks, because I don't know what you do, but I want to take you out. <laughs> I have a lot of bad habits. I bite my nails all the time. My girlfriend always yells at me. It's kind of annoying. She's like, dude, we're at brunch. Put your fucking socks back on. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I don't have a girlfriend. I like casual sex. Y'all like casual sex? I love it, man. There's nothing better than making love to a woman one Friday a month in jeans and a Hawaiian shirt. It's the stupidest joke. It's so dumb. I don't even have a job like that. It's, it's fake. <laughs> They're doing sound right here. Watch this. Somebody just had a seizure backstage. <laughs> doing comedy in the shadow of VCU. Why is this stage so dark? This is the darkest place in this whole restaurant. It would be brighter if I did comedy in the bathroom with no lights on. Probably smell better too. Boom! Suck it, Mojos. Thanks for supporting local comedy. <laughs> you guys know every time you jerk off to interracial porn, a racist dies in a hunting accident? <laughs> so do your fucking duty! I killed four racists today. <laughs> You guys like 69ing? Yeah. Fucking morons. 69ing is the stupidest thing you can do without your clothes on. You're telling me that I can get a mediocre, distracted blowjob and an ab workout at the same time? <laughs> Added bonus, I get to put my nose in somebody's asshole. And I say get to, because I still consider it a privilege. <laughs> I know what I look like. I didn't try this shirt on before I bought it. I'm really self oh, I guess I should step into the light. Just like right, right here. This is a problem. Is it going good? Sound good outside? Okay. <laughs> 69ing is a sexual equivalent of doing parkour. <laughs> like, it looks great on camera. But if you're super into it, we can't be friends. <laughs> a handrail's made for safety, and you broke your ankle on it. <laughs> Figure out how the world works. <laughs> 69 ing is a sexual equivalent of going to Mount Rushmore. <laughs> The days leading up to you, you're like, oh my god, I'm so excited. I've read about it in all my history books. It's an American classic. And then you get there and you're like, I am so sweaty. We should have let the Native Americans keep it. Read a fucking book if you don't get that last part. <laughs> Who am I? This is Mojo's. Nobody knows how to read in here. What are you talking about? <laughs> the vaguely Native American looking dude gave me the finger. Exactly. Invisible children, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's a domestic issue! Why are you, you don't even give a shit about kids in Iran for? Sorry, I get political sometimes. I have schizophrenia too. Um, <laughs> What, uh, you guys know what Dale Earnhardt Sr., Paul Walker, and Princess Diana all have in common? They're fucking royalty! In true Mojo's fashion, I'm gonna check my notes. 69 is just a bad name. Should be called, guess what? Your partner ate. 
<laughs> You'll know. <laughs> Spicy garlic smells the same coming out. <laughs> Ask the fucking kitchen staff if you think that's bullshit. I know from personal experience, they were delicious though. Buy them. <laughs> I'm dumb. I just wanted to tell you guys up front, I'm dumb. I, I'm 25 years old, almost 26. I just figured out how to spell ridiculous. <laughs> R-I-D-I! <laughs> which in itself is ridiculous. Which is the, the least funny part of that joke. <laughs> that I shouldn't have included. There are two... I'm just realizing now there are two cameras on me. And we are in a cheesesteak restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> and my parents claim to be proud of me. <laughs> I am dumb, dude. I like to uh, I like to play pranks on my roommate. Uh, like uh, I like to I like to take a stopwatch, and I have a smoke machine, and I fill it with the with the with the with the, with the fog juice. But I also add a few drops of liquid smoke to it, and I time how long it takes for my neighbors to call the cops, the fire department. Fuck. Messed up on camera! I also... That's, that's my career out the window, guys. I'm quitting after this set. Um, <laughs> what, what? What? I also like to, uh, like when my roommate's asleep, I, I have my trusty stopwatch, and I put, I put his hands in warm water, and then I click my stopwatch, right? And then I see how long it takes to smother him with a pillow. Do your fucking dishes! He doesn't work here anymore, so he can't hear me. I started off so strong. What did I say, guys? What did, was it the jokes? 69. Oh, everybody's a 69 fan in here, I see. Stepping on some toes. I'm lazy too, man. Like... Like, I... I emotionally lazy, really. Like, I have to, I can't deal with shit, you know? Like, I have to get drunk before I check my bills. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking neighbors hate me. Neil! Get out of here, Neil! Hey, look, hey, look at this. Look at this right here, look. Look, look. Are you a baseball card? No? Am I a baseball card? No. Why are they sending us to collections? <laughs> I don't feel good. I, I was laying on my back. I'm lazy, man. I, I was laying on my back the other day on the couch, and I opened a, a glass bottle of beer, and I threw the bottle cap at the trash can, it missed a trash can, it bounced off the wall behind it, and then it rolled under my couch. And my thought was, I will get that when I move. <laughs> I look at cleaning my apartment like I look at paying my taxes. It gets important when the cops show up. <laughs> Bunch of clean, 69ing, loving motherfuckers in here tonight. I expected more out of you, Mojos. <laughs> I'm a drunk, man. I drink too much. Do you know you drink too much when... What are we talking about? Sorry, bending over hurts. I ate so much Philly cheesesteak before I got up here. T today I've eaten like a death row prisoner on execution night. It's just like, just like pizza and tacos and cheesesteak and opioids. 
I'm gonna leave you guys on this. Doing stand-up comedy is a lot of fun, but it's a little bit it's a little bit hit and miss. Uh, like it's like farting, you know what I mean? It's like sometimes you're like, this is the best! Everyone's aware of me! And then other times you're like, that was shit. <laughs> Guys, my name's Jason Custer. Thank you for supporting local comedy and local business. Guys, let's let's give Jason another round of applause, huh? I said before uh, Jason went on that I've been friends with him for like 20 years. I think that's gonna end tonight. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, he's taught me a lot of things. He's taught me to just kind of be an asshole to people in public, like. Like when, when I see a couple out at a fast food restaurant or something and the wife asks if the husband wants a straw, I'll just answer for him. I'll say yes. Uh, and the other day I was at a grocery store and I just, I had filled up my car with groceries and I was walking out with a large pizza also and I see an older lady and she says, oh, I'm coming with you. And I said, I don't know. My car is pretty full. Let me see if I can clear a seat off for you. So I set the pizza down. And I just wiped my face off and I said, all right, hop on, let's go. <laughs> Let it sink in, guys. <laughs> uh, geez. Oh, man, uh, your next comic, he, is, he came all the way from Salt Lake City, Utah, just for this one night. <laughs> just to do this. this is, I had met him for the first time tonight. I saw him on Comedy Central. No, I'm just kidding. All that's a lie. Uh, he is a member of Rich Girls Comedy. He, I've known him for a very long time, too. We were in Boy Scouts together. Yeah! And then he taught yeah. me about masturbating at summer camp. Oh, yeah. <laughs> His name is Chris White. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Good. Oh, hey, thanks. You a Minnesota Wild fan? No. Yeah. Nobody is. They're terrible. They're not last in their division, though, so that's uh... <laughs> Woo! Yeah, my name's Chris White. Uh, let's just, uh, you know, I'm just gonna let you guys get to know me. I'm gonna tell you about something that I do, a game that I play pretty much every night. Started playing it shortly before I dropped out of college. It's a lot of fun, all right? Name of the game, Chris is a failure, all right? Here's what you do. Here's how you play. All right, you get ready for bed, you lie down, and just as you're about to drift off into sleep, you think about all the decisions you've made in your life and where you could be. It's fun for hours, all right? Yeah, you win the game if you don't cry yourself to sleep. When the game goes into overtime, if you're still wondering what could have happened when the sun comes up. Here's a fun fact, I've never won. Now I'm 28 years old, I guess I'm going through the old, uh, quarter-life crisis, you know what I mean? You know, started doing stuff, trying to, trying to regain my coolness. I got a single-speed bike, you know, because that's what, that's what the kids are doing these days, right? I got a tattoo on my arm of the state that we're in currently. Uh, you know. I got a messenger bag because I'm not a bike messenger. I went online and ordered it. Other tab opened pictures of cats uh, because I'm alone. Hang in there, Chris. It's a cat poster the cat's hanging from a tree branch. Hang in there. You guys having lives or something? I know what a lot of you are thinking. You're thinking like, hey, Chris. Hey, Chris. Hey, what's up, guys? How's it going down there? 
Yeah. Hey Chris, you're a big dude. You could have whatever you wanted if you if you tried hard enough. If you just were a little aggressive. And that's all well and good until I actually get aggressive and then everyone's like, whoa, pump the brakes, guy. Just calm down. You just put a hole in the wall by running through it. A la the juggernaut from X-Men. How are we gonna pay for that wall? I make $10 an hour, is what I'm trying to say. That joke is about inequality. <laughs> no, I am a little aggressive sometimes though. I, I gotta, you know, kind of bubble near the surface a bit. Um, and I was watching a movie with my niece one time. I got a five-year-old niece. We were watching a Disney movie. We were watching Beauty and the Beast. And I was like, this is absolutely ridiculous. This does not happen in real life. At no point does the princess fall in love with the large hairy man with anger issues, okay? <laughs> That's not how that works. I'm sorry I have anger issues. I just don't like people coming into my room. It's my private space, okay? I have a mirror in there and then a rose in a jar. <laughs> Because I don't understand about oxygen. <laughs> Do you ever just think that you're a garbage person because of the trash in your room, like mirrors and roses in jars? No, my car's a dump right now, and that's a fact. Ooh, almost lost balance there. That was that would be weird. Not even, not even drunk. Oh, but I feel like a garbage person. No one else does? You don't feel like a... No? Woo! Hey, we got a couple people. Uh, for Christmas this year, my family had a very Dollar Tree Christmas. I got them all World's Greatest Dad mugs and loose batteries. Why? I don't know why the Dollar Tree sells loose batteries. I don't think they work half the time. I don't know what, it's just a bin of loose batteries. That's a silly marketing strategy, Dollar Tree. Man, we need to get it together. Enough about me, you guys like rap music? Yeah. yeah. You like R. Kelly? Yeah. We're not gonna talk about the P stuff. We're gonna talk about his actual music because that dude, that dude, his entire discography is how good he is at sex. He's just like, hey, I could fuck, you know? He says some stuff that I could only like imagine saying, you know? In, uh, in Bump and Grind, he's like, hey, there's nothing wrong, okay? We're just gonna fuck, okay? That's what we're doing here. And it works according to his song. Uh, for me, when I'm getting intimate with a woman, I'm kind of like, hey, you know, this end of the couch is pretty comfy. Do you want to, I don't know, scooch on down this way, maybe? We can smooch, if you want. Is that? No one uses the word smooch anymore? Yeah. And that's how it works out for me. No one laughs and uh, I'm alone at the end of the night on stage with a microphone in my hand. Man, I do get on social media, think about all the things that could have been. Uh, there's a girl that I know. That's the only reason I have Facebook, right? Because we just all stalk people that we used to know. Yeah, right? That's what. There's this girl that uh, that I made out with once in, once in college. I'd just like to see how she's doing. Um, yeah. You know, uh, she got a dog recently. Uh, she just wants strawberry. Uh, it was from the pound, you know? Just a mess. Um, uh, she wants strawberry picking. You know, that's pretty adorable, right? You know, she just got engaged, so. Keep your fingers crossed, you know, for me, that it ends. 
right? There's still a chance. I just have this fantasy that one day, like, she'll, we'll, like, run into each other in, like, a coffee shop, and she'll be like, oh my god, Chris. Chris White, we made out in college. I think about you all the time. I've divorced my husband, and I've given him sole custody of the children. Now we can run away together. So, like I said, keep your fingers crossed. Uh, yeah, that's not gonna happen, I know that. <laughs> hey, when did white people in Richmond who studied abroad become the authority on ethnic food? <laughs> Just because I want lettuce and cheese on my tacos doesn't mean I'm a gringo. Look at me, you don't look back, okay? <laughs> the worst is when you order it, the guy's like, oh, you want that gringo style? It's like, all right, Jeff. We're, we're both white here, okay? You have more tattoos than I do. All right, can you just give me the lettuce and cheese and the sour cream? Thanks. I don't get that. Well, anyway, I hope you guys had fun. I hope you laughed. My name's uh, Chris White. Give it up for Tom Holmes who's coming back. Up here. Guys, that was Chris. He was not drunk. Uh, Sobriety is a good thing. We should all try it. The next guy coming to the stage is one of the weirdest people I know, so I hope you guys are ready for that. It is awesome. He works here. He makes your cheesesteak sometimes when you're not here. When you are here, not on Tuesdays. Just ignore that. All right, guys. His name is Brian Mann. Woo! Hey, what's cracking, everybody? Y'all doing good? Y'all doing good? They were talking about drinking earlier. You guys ever been really drunk walking through an alley, like an alley and you throw up on like a pile of litter and for a moment you're like, I don't remember eating any of these things. It's like a bunch of cigarette butts, some broken glass, like a rusty battery. Yeah. It's a weird walk over here. I live like one minute away. <laughs> it's great. Uh, so yeah, I do. Uh, I do work at Mojo's. Started off doing dishes. Learned two things while doing that. One is that you know, man, dishes be dripping. <laughs> dishes be dripping. <laughs> Second of all, though, I know how to make them hose spray. <laughs> Sorry about. <laughs> the dish, dishwashing hose, it's pretty standard in a restaurant. Yeah, food's great. <laughs> uh, so, uh, got anybody that uh, smokes weed here? Any weed smokers here? Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Alright, keep it down. <laughs> Feds are everywhere these days. Uh, the other day I was uh, smoking before going on a walk, and I was trying to plug my headphones in for like an hour, and I realized it was just my shoelaces. <laughs> I'm trying to plug them into my iPod, it's not working. Got an athlete's foot in my ear. <laughs> it's actually kind of cool. <laughs> Helped me invent a new genre of music. <laughs> Punk rock. <laughs> it only sounds good if you have a horrible ear infection. <laughs> I don't know. It's great. Uh, so growing up, uh, my parents in the room above me, they uh, they would go to sleep to a like a sound machine, you know, a sleep machine, and it would be on a heartbeat setting. 
which was cool uh, for a while, but I started having womb flashbacks, uh, just being in this cramped, dark room below them. And uh, I remember uh, trying to hang myself with my own umbilical cord after eating my twin brother. <laughs> That's right, everybody. First meal ever, fetus mignon. <laughs> Cooked extra rare. It's next week's Philly of the week. Um, I've been trying to pitch this idea for a while that we use lamb meat, and it's called a pedophily. I don't think it's ever gonna work out. But, uh, oh god, I'm gonna shut up about that. <laughs> but it's great. Birth is great. Life is great. Death. Death is pretty cool. It's all in everybody's mind. In the back of it, you know? I, I, I've given it some thought, and I know, like, what I want, like, in my will, how I want my body disposed. I just want it tossed out of an airplane. Uh, and like filmed on the way down, just like <laughs> for like a solid 15 minutes, and like a rib pops out of my chest, and a seagull eats it, and then flies to the propeller of the airplane and coats my body with blood, and it like lands in the middle of the pentagram that my family's like standing around. <laughs> it's great. And then we play it at public libraries on their TVs in between their summer reading program <laughs> adverts. It's great. Life's great. Uh, growing up, uh, my mom was a heroin addict. She's uh, not anymore. Give it up. Give it up, everybody. Give it up. So I used to always tell her. It's like, give it up, mom. You're gonna be the world's greatest heroin addict? Jesus. Yeah, you're going nowhere with this. Get a job in an office. You gonna move to New York or something? Like some, uh, oh, what's that junkie's name? Patrick Busey? I don't know. You'll see him later. <laughs> Sorry, Patrick. <laughs> I looked him in the eyes. Anyways, uh, so yeah, growing up was really fun with that. Uh, she's a real smack rabbit. <laughs> um, she uh, used to cut my hair though, because she had like a class at a uh, cosmetology school one time uh, before she dropped out. Uh, <laughs> she was giving a buzz cut one time, and the clippers like broke halfway through, so I had no hair here, but like a bunch in the back, and I looked like fucking Anthony Hopkins. It was terrible. <laughs> I had to uh, wear a hat because my sister would like laugh at me really hard. But then when my mom wasn't looking, I'd go up to my sister and I'd take off the hat. <laughs> and when she started laughing, I'd be like, ah. <laughs> so then I just tell y'all something about myself. Um, <laughs> and Sam Hopkins is crazy. He's been in a lot of movies. <laughs> movies. Hmm. Fabulous. I've been going to, uh, to LC meetings lately, if you all heard about these. Yeah, 2016 we got AA, we got NA, we got LC, it's meetings for the lost and confused. It's just people who generally don't know what's going on. <laughs> and uh, you know, you go in and you're like, my name's Brian, I'm lost and confused. Everybody's like, hello Brian. You're like, yeah, I don't really know what I'm doing here. Group leader takes over at that point because she's trying to have a purpose. <laughs> she's like, well, we're here to talk about, you know, how we don't really, and I'm like, hold on, lady. I know I'm here. I responded to the ad on Craigslist. I just don't know why I'm here. Hey, Jared. Everybody clap for Jared. Now, uh, now stand up and stand on your chairs and dance. <laughs> alright, alright, I'll just see if I can make you <laughs> do something twice in a row. Um, better look next time in Kale Culture.
And you have a TV control you. <laughs> One time, Tom Hall, our host of the show, traded me a slice of pizza for several doses of marijuana smoke. And I obliged. Somebody call the fucking cops. Oh, oh, I'm done, by the way. Goodbye, everybody. I'm Brian Mann. Just come to my house and knock on the door. My dog will kill you. It's not my dog. Don't know whose dog it is. Brian Mann really knows how to end a set. After party at his house. It's right behind this building. I expect to see everyone there. Bye, guys. Oh, gee golly, are you guys still having fun? Yeah! Cool, I lost steam about 30 minutes ago. Oh, well, great new blood. I thought I smelled it. Oh, gee golly. Oh, boy. All right, your next comic. He, uh, I like this guy a lot. Uh, that's, uh, he, he's, the, he's a very genuine person. Jacob McFadden, fuck you. His name is Clay Show. What's going on, everyone? My name is Clay Schoaf. I am a uh, blonde haired, blue eyed, straight, white male, which may be triggering for some of you. But we'll get through this together. I fucking, you can't really see me because of this lighting. I look, I look like God tried to create a militant atheist. I just constantly have dark circles under my eyes, like somebody just fucking Power Rangered me right in the face. <laughs> I look like a Tim Burton character. Which, side note, I, I feel like most of Tim Burton's exes were probably cutters. I, uh, keep, I, I, you're, I, I keep the, uh, I keep the Amber Alerts on on my phone, I don't know if you guys do, but I keep the Amber Alerts on, on my phone. Not because I think I'm going to save the kid, that's a fool's errand. Uh, <laughs> now I keep it on just to make sure that, like, they don't drive the same vehicle as me. Because, <laughs> like, rednecks have smartphones now. And they think that they're going to stop the, ki the, the kidnapper. Like, well, you better hope I don't see a tan Ford Explorer pull that side piece out of my door. <laughs> I, gotta, I, I don't need my tires getting blown out because Uncle Jay got a notifier on his space phone. <laughs> Some creep in a Ford Focus stole a kid. To be fair, it's, it's, us it's usually just, it's his, it's his dad, like 99% of the time, it's the kid's dad. Or the mom, like they got into an argument, one of them took the kid, the other one called the cops, but nobody wants to hear that story, everybody wants to hear the kid diddling story. God, domestic, domestic problems, domestic spousal abuse, you get that shit right at home. But a good kid diddling story, you gotta go online to seek that out. Everybody wants to see the kid diddling story so they can tell their friends, oh, you don't want to read that. For some reason, we keep clicking the links. So you, gotta, you gotta have, the kids gotta get abducted and molested to get people to read the stories, to click the links so they can see the ads and we can sell the Samsung Galaxies. <laughs> There's a, there's, there's a monetary incentive to have kids be diddled so that we can keep the wheels of this capitalistic machine turning. <laughs> then BuzzFeed will take it and they'll re, re, re clickbait it. 14 things you didn't know would fit into a little boy's butthole. <laughs> Number seven will shock you. <laughs> Eat fresh. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's not the normal tag for that, I just thought it would be funny. You ever have to go back in a text message and decapitalize the word God? Woo! Very passionate. <laughs> it's like, you know what, like, I don't want people to think I'm talking about that God. It's just like, these goddamn Legos on the floor hurt. I'm not trying to invoke the Almighty. Use his name in vain, because that guy gets real persnickety when you use his name wrong. Shall not use it in vain. All right, man, well, you picked the fucking name. Like, you could have gone with something else. We, that word meant all the, all the gods. You can't just capitalize the G and expect us to know the difference. There's plenty of good names. Like Poseidon, that's a good one. It's a very powerful name. Yahweh, Allah. I feel like Allah is going to be the next big one. You know, it's like ISIS been putting in a lot of work lately <laughs> with, with their viral marketing campaign. I mean, that's the, if we're being honest, that's how you gotta do it. That's how the Christians did it. You, got, you wanna be a major religion, you have to kill a lot of people. <laughs> that's how you get your name on the map. Just seems a lot worse now. Like, like, they're doing the same things the Christians did. Like, that's, like, thousands of years ago. I feel like that's the big difference between Christianity and Islam. It's just, like, they staggered their crusades. So, so it seems a lot worse now. Because, like, with the Christian crusades, all we have is, like, Dr. Seuss paintings. So, it's like, yeah, not so bad. ISIS, we got, like, 1080p video. And, like, I guess Iraq has a graphic design program. It's, Seems a lot worse when you get in there with that close-up camera gym. Fucking see someone, the life draining out of them as they get their head cut off with a field knife. I'm just saying, watch that shit. It makes it seem a lot less problematic when someone slips a pronoun. <laughs> Puts things into perspective. There's real issues in the world. I saw, I saw a bumper sticker, uh, before I get off this ISIS thing, I saw a bumper sticker on the back of a hearse that said, free rides for members of ISIS. It's like, all right, but can you imagine if your grandma was in the back of that thing? It's like, we're having a procession here. We're in mourning. We have police cars stopping people at intersections so we can ride through with our flashers. Are you making this weird political joke? A hearse? Really? Plus, Wait a second, we paid $10,000 for the modest package, and these motherfuckers get a free ride? <laughs> Go ahead and throw a burka on Gam Gam. <laughs> Tough economic climate, we can't afford to pass up a deal. Well, I don't know what their flags say, just get some black sheets and white out. Try to doodle menacingly. You should watch those videos, though. Really puts things into perspective. It's like, fucking, Clay, you don't understand. You're privileged. Yeah, yeah, no. I don't know. Your experience is not universal. People like to say that for some reason, like they're saying something. Yeah, no shit. Are you, wait, wait, what? You're telling me people in this room are experiencing it from different perspectives? Fuck me! God damn! That's paradigm shifting. If you like heard that, you're like, that's good. You're probably part of the problem. You probably lack empathy. Like you don't know what that person that you're mad at's experience was. You don't know if this supposedly bigoted dude, what, what meth-addled trailer park that he grew up in, every time as a little kid when he saw something and went, oh, look how pretty his dad didn't go. We ain't raising no faggots in this house, boy. Every time he's, he said, oh, look, oh, look, a butterfly. <laughs> Say the words. We ain't raising no faggots in this house. <laughs> so when that kid grows up 20 years later and his father's finally taken by the liquor and Xanax and he gets the strength to say in front of strangers, you know, I think faggots should be able to get married. That could be progress. All right, my name's Clay Show. Have a good night. That was Clay. Hey, that's Clay again.
Oh, jeez. Uh, your next comic, he is a great guy. He, all these cool flyers that you can't see right now because there, there's one right in the back of the room. He, this, this next comic, he designed it and he does a lot more for Mojo's comedy than I do and I appreciate it very much. Uh, his name is Alex Hill. Really? That's it? That's all you guys got? Come on, I said Tom Hall, give him a round of applause! Two years! If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be doing this. You guys wouldn't be entertained right now. Can you imagine such a world where you're not being entertained with a live person, with a live microphone, yelling in your face so you can look back blankly at them? Like, is he gonna tell a joke or what? Hi guys, I'm Alex. How you doing? Barely alive, I like it. I will bring you to life just like Evanescence. <laughs> if you guys are like me, then you are pissed to find out that feather boas are not bird snakes. No, they're just weird ass scarves, and we should get rid of them, we should put them in a pile and burn them. That's a real aggressive way to talk about something that is the least aggressive thing on the planet. You're welcome. You're welcome. I like meditating. I think it is a great, great way to mentally, physically, and spiritually commit the sin of sloth. It's real boring. You're not doing shit. But meditating is how I figured out that I am a cat. I am. I'm a cat. I'm fuzzy. I'm lovable. People always try and hug me and pet me. But all I want to do is stand in your lap and stick my butthole in your face. Cause hey, opinions are like assholes. I just want to shove mine in your face. That one never gets as big of a laugh as the first one. Maybe you guys are worried I'm actually gonna do it. Don't worry, I won't. I haven't been dewormed in at least 12 years. It would be bad. At this point, I'm basically just like a thin sack of meat entirely run and operated by worms. It's like Osmosis Jones, but instead of Bill Murray, it's me. And instead of Chris Rock or whatever those cartoons were supposed to be, it's worms. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I do real intellectual comedy. It makes you just think about social issues and who's running for president and all that nonsense. That's what I'm here for. That's why I'm here. You guys are fun. I'm so glad you're here. I really am. Like, this is something that I am amazed that we're still here doing this. This is amazing. I love it. I love it. I love it. Also, I catcalled a girl for the first time in my life recently. Give it up for that! Your hearts weren't in it, let's be honest. Nobody's like, hey, you know that thing that like we all agreed like a year and a half ago we'd stop doing because it was real mean and stuff? Yeah! That! No. But I did it for the first time recently, so you're welcome. Don't worry, don't worry, it was a baby. Yeah. I can't call the baby, you're welcome. This seemed like fun, I was driving home from work. Stopped at a red light, saw this couple walking by on the sidewalk, a dude and a lady, and I was like, oh, this will be fun, because the dude was holding the baby. So I rolled down my window, I was like, oh, shit, what up, baby? How you doing today? You looking fine, is that a new diaper? It looks good on you, it matches your eyes. You just get off work? Me too, me too. What are you getting into, trying to get some drinks? I got some dope-ass milk back in my crib. What, you got your own crib? That's awesome. We're both doing equally well in life. I like this. Because, you know, I thought that'd be fun for everyone. Everyone would get it, except maybe the baby. Because, you know, the baby's a baby. The baby doesn't understand English or comedy. Not like me. I'm a genius. But, like, you know, it's a baby. It's not the baby's fault. Not this dude. This dude was pissed. He's like, what'd you say? And he looked like he was about to throw that baby down in preparation to throw down with me. It's just like, dude, I'm not the singer of the Lost Prophets. Chill out. <laughs> Too many of you get that reference. I 
was expecting to have to explain the whole fact that the singer of Lost Prophets got arrested for fucking a baby, but you know, you guys all on board. Interesting. Well, good. I'm glad you guys share a mutual hatred for the Lost Prophets. <sighs> well, I consider myself a Lost Prophet. Because recently I had one of those slap in the face reminders that homeless people are incredibly complex human beings. And by incredibly complex, I mean batshit insane. They're crazy. Like, I met this dude when I was hanging out outside of work, minding my own business. He walked up to me, he was like, hey man, I like your artwork. I wasn't drawing a goddamn thing. <laughs> Just kind of sitting there, looked around, oh shit, he's talking to me. So I was like, hey, thanks. So he proceeded to point to my tattoos on my arm, which, you know, you can't see, but I'm bringing up so you guys know I'm cool as shit. Oh, I'm sorry. I said point. My bad. Clearly this dude didn't understand the whole pointing thing because he rubbed his finger all over my arm. Just really got in there like, is that real? Oh no, it's real. Yeah. Because he, he, you know, he hadn't heard of pointing. He was just still in this world where, oh, I wish we had a gesture where you could signify that you're talking about something so that other people would know what you're talking about. But we just don't have one, so you just sort of have to touch a table when you're talking about a table. <laughs> and that's that dude's life, so I was just like, thanks, man. So, of course, he was like, what do you know about scripture? <laughs> that's a hard left turn. Don't know how he got from point A to point G-O-D, but it happened fast. Now we're traveling light speed down a road I don't want to go. So I was just like, everything. Because, you know, when someone asks you something you don't want to talk about, you just say you know everything. Usually they're like, oh, shit, I don't want to talk about that with you anymore. <laughs> like someone's like, hey, what do you know about zoo books? And you're like, oh, it's a monthly subscription-based magazine. It's about animals. You know, like, started in Evanston, Illinois in 1980. They're like, oh, shit, I don't want to talk to you about zoo books anymore. You're going to bore my fucking ears off. So I was just like, uh, all right, that, that's going to go well, and this guy's not going to talk to me anymore. No, he saw it as a learning opportunity, because he was just like, all right, tell me something. John 3.16? What does that mean? Forever 21? I don't know. <laughs> He's like, no, nah, nah, let me tell you something. In the beginning, the Lord appeared a fowl, and then... He took his finger and pointed, pointed to the sky. <laughs> and the birds, they formed a column, a column of birds. Isn't that beautiful? What? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, yeah, you know, that's great. Beautiful, gorgeous, whatever you want. And he was like, yeah. I'm a master of transitions. He gave me one of these. <laughs> that's his hand on my face. <laughs> Weird, unwarranted, don't know what I did to accept that, but it happened. And then it got weirder because he was like, That beard? That's the Jew in you. What? <laughs> no, that's not a thing. You can't just make up a stereotype. That's not how it works. But he had a beard, so I was like, Well, what about your beard? And he's like, oh, That's different. And walked away. <laughs> For only about 10 seconds, then he was right back, scampered right on over. Had some more crazy shit to tell me. He's like, want to see my artwork? Nope. <laughs> Not in the slightest. Too late, he's already ripped off three coats, pulls up his sleeve. He's got a tattoo of an eagle with a banner that says, Death Before Dishonor. <laughs> know what that means? Is it white power? I don't think I want to know. It seems bad. It seems scary. No, 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 no. It means I'm a ring. Know what that means? It means I don't quit. Know what that means? Don't give up. Know what that means? Don't surrender. Know what that means? You can't beat me. Not now. Blah. Cool. Don't care. And that's when he did the most terrifying thing a homeless person's ever done to me. He reached into his pocket and very forcefully tried to give me $20. What is life? Like, I'm sure I've given homeless people at least 20 bucks in my lifetime, but I never expected a return on that investment. So I was like, no, I can't tell you. No, no, God gave me this $20. He wants you to have it. I don't think God gave you that $20. I 
I think someone equally, if not more uncomfortable than I am right now, gave you that $20. And I don't think they wanted me to have it because I seriously doubt they know who the fuck I am. Plus, you already have it, so you might as well keep it. He was like, no, I don't surrender. Like, Shit, he did mention that. That's my bad, that's on me. So I didn't know what to do, so I was just like, oh shit, lie. Lying is always an option. I was just like, listen man, I'm a trust fund kid. Money doesn't mean shit to me. Keep your measly 20 bucks. It's like, all right, well then fuck you, go with God. Fist bumped me and gave me double middle fingers as he walked away. <laughs> So if there is a God, Mysterious Ways doesn't even begin to touch how he works. Because he sends dudes like that to get his message out there. And it worked! Because sure, maybe he scared the shit out of plenty of people, but he told me, and I've been telling everybody. I've told at least a hundred people, so his message is out there. I don't know what it is, but it's out there. All I do know is that I'm gonna get a tattoo that says Dave Matthews Band right across my stomach. It's gonna be big, bold, you won't be able to miss it. I'm gonna be wearing midriff shirts all the time. So that way when dudes come up to me and they're like, hey man, I like your artwork. I can gut check him over the railing of that yacht and go back to enjoying the 311 cruise without feeling the least bit bad about it. 311 sucks, thank you guys so much for coming out. I'm Alex Hill, have a great night. Hey, Alex. Hey, uh, Why did you bring it up? Your next comic, uh, he, he's a very dear friend of mine. He and I have done some things together. He witnessed me fucking a hole in the ground in Gainesville, Florida. It was one of the most amazing things I had ever done. Uh, he is hes doing a show at Strange Matter next Friday, April 1st. It's only $5. If you like it, you should go see it. This guy from True TV is headlining. It'll be a great time. His name, oh, he was also in a, a really great rock and roll band. Uh, you probably listened to it in high school, but don't like to admit it. His name is Mr. J James Munoz. <laughs> Give it up to Tomas Josiah Rawl, everybody. <laughs> that was so shitty. That intro, no, it ain't. Fuck it, fuck it. Fuck it, guys. When I agreed to do a show here at Mojo's, and Tom Hall said, Sweet James, do you want a headline? My heart swiped up, and my liver swiped left and said, No, you dumb fuck! But here I am, and here you are. We're feeling good, feeling great. Feeling a little low energy because uh, right before this show I went to the gym and I did 30,000 kegels. Yeah, give it up for me. Thank you guys. My personal trainer is really pissed off because he wants me to do 10,000 crunches every week. Can you fucking believe that? I do about 500 crunches, but they're cheesy gordita crunches. Yes. Only unhealthy get that. Now this is cool, Mojos. Give it up for all the comics you've uh, uh, experienced tonight. Give it up for uh, your host. Hell, give it up for the, uh, the beer in front of you. Keeping you uh, dehydrated all night. Give it up to the gang of comics outside. Brooksy's out there, looking great. Put your tits on the glass for me. No, it's fine, it's fine. We're not at karaoke, who the fuck do I think I am? Uh, we've, had a, we've, had a, we've had a fun uh, uh, winter, everybody survived the winter. My favorite part of the winter is when it snows because I get to build a snowman with my family. And it, everything's nice and dandy until I find that the neighborhood kids built a massive erection on my snowman, right? And the only way to get rid of that shit you know, to jerk it off, right? And you know he comes in flurries, so. She's making a painful looking face over there. Did you try to deep throat it and you didn't realize you could just jerk him off? No? She can't even talk because of the frostbitten larynx, see? Don't ever deep throat 
the snow, snow. <laughs> yes. The cutting political satire of James Munoz includes a deep throating snowman bit right off the top. Hope you guys are ready for that. Um, I grew up Catholic. Anybody subjected to general mutilation at an early age? Anybody chopped up and blocked up? No? You? I feel like the Catholic Church could totally turn around their image if they just did one thing, and that is introduce the Doritos Locos communion wafer. <laughs> the body of Christ, live mass. <laughs> That's why I died for your sins, so you could live moss. <laughs> and we wouldn't wash that shit down with, you know, the, the wine anymore, the blood of Christ. We would get the code red Mountain Dew of Christ. Can I get a hallelujah? <laughs> hallelujah. All my followers are outside. <sighs> what else are we talking about? Um, been doing this comedy thing for uh, for a, a couple of years now, and I've finally gotten the chance to uh, uh, actually not just do comedy in Richmond, which is really insane to me. Um, I got into my first festival this year, uh, and I think with all this thank you with all this popularity, I'm gonna probably need a gun, right, guys? Right? And the, the thing about buying a gun is it's really hard because you know I I want one that's artisanal. Uh, preferably barrel aged, um, and I just can't find the right one. It, it, they all have like a weird mouthfeel, and I'm just you know, <laughs> thrown off at that. I said it's a weird mouthfeel. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. Did I say gun? I meant shotgun. Um, no, we get dark. It's okay. It's all right. You know, you know, like one in like 20 people shoot themselves with a gun, right? Is that true? Right? Is that what happens? Uh, maybe like one in five infants kill their mothers with a gun, you know? And, and then people say there aren't any heroes with guns. <laughs> Thank you. Alright, you guys don't like pol politics? Political jokes? You don't like it? No, it's too much? It's too hairy? Let's talk about hairy shit. My body. My body type isn't, it, right now it's getting to my ideal beach bod. But I'm kind of at the uh, log of polenta that got kicked across the floor of a, a barber shop. Right before uh, back to school. I'm, I'm basically also growing out my hair in, in case like Trump incites a race war. Because I want to be on the right side, you know. And, and the, the race that I want to be a part of is Wookiee. It's an intergalactic space race, yes, they still count. I don't know. Went back to uh, my hometown of Tucson, Arizona for uh, Thanksgiving, and I, knew, I noticed something was wrong as soon as I hugged my mom. And I sat down and looked her right across the, the, the dinner table, and in that moment I realized my two best friends growing up got morbidly obese. And to clarify, my mom got fake tits. Huge. Huge tits. So now, it's like, it's like as if I'm watching the old Star Wars movies with the director's edits. And that's why I nicknamed my mother's chest the Twin Sons of Tatooine. Thank you, nerds. You guys feeling that? No? Um, you guys like heavy metal? Yeah, a couple of you. One guy. The cook. Think about loving heavy heavy metal, and then like this. The, the, everybody's always being filmed. Shit is that you're gonna eventually find out some of your favorite heavy metal dudes aren't down with people of color, right? Right? As a brown man, I, get, I got offended that now I can't listen to fucking Pantera anymore because Phil got wasted and then Sig Heil and said white power. And he blamed it on drinking white wine. 
That's fucking insane, right? But I could kind of level with a guy, you know, one time I drank a bunch of tequila and then said, Viva la raza, puto! And punched my best friend in the face who's white. Well, see, highly. No. One time I did a bunch of sake bombs and then drove a Honda Accord into a Starbucks to kill a bunch of white people. No, that was just a dream. An MLK Jr. kind of dream. Guys, I realized this year that my car insurance doesn't mean shit. Did you know that accidents forgiveness goes right out through the window? If it happens while you're getting roadhead? <laughs> the worst part is I T-boned a school bus during this shit, right? Now don't worry, nobody was hurt. But my Segway is fucking totaled. I know, you're sh can you believe it? They're, sh they're such shoddy built pieces of equipment, right? So please join my crowdfund, uh, get James back on two wheels. <laughs> Anyways, uh... <laughs> now, uh... I'm coming up upon, uh, the age 30. Thank you. Fortunately, it happened 157 weeks ago. Which is fine, but I notice a lot of weird things that keep, keep happening to my body, you know? I'm in public places, you know, I, the other day I was in court, and just out of nowhere I got a massive erection. And usually I could sit down and write that shit out, but it was basketball court? It was the fucking worst time to start a co-ed summer league. But the best time to let all your haters know you go hard in the paint. Am I right? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, mercy me. She liked it. She said that was a good one. You guys ever go to comedy shows? No. No? Your first comedy show ever? Have you ever seen Gallagher? Well, I'm way better. I'm way fucking better. Um, Alright, let, let's talk about some real shit, guys. Um, I've seen this billboard that says, The most Richmond thing you can do. Have you, anybody seen this? Elephant insurance? Nobody? No, you never leave the fan? Alright, there's a fucking giant billboard with a dude in a suit walking next to Nutsy. And I'm assuming they didn't have the budget to show a guy, I don't know, cutting off his sleeves of his denim vest, uh, turning all his jean, <laughs> jeans into jorts, and then riding a bike into the James River while he was getting an Avail Pope tattoo, <laughs> and then funneling a PBR while complaining about Richmond on his phone. I realize me and that dude's friends are very different. <laughs> Guys, I drank a lot of white wine tonight. <laughs> but I love all of you. Thank you guys so much for coming out to this incredible comedy night. Two years? Are you fucking kidding me? Give it up for Tom Hall, everybody. I'm James Munoz. James Munoz! I love that guy more than words. I think I like him more than Jason Custer. What? David Custer? Did I say, oh, David Custer, that's his dad. <laughs> oh, there's Jason. Uh, guys, we have a special guest tonight. Uh, a lot of the comics knew about one of them, but I like to throw curveballs and threw in another one. This guy used to work here, and then he went to jail. Uh, but uh, he can smoke wheat now, he just had court. Uh, his name is Mr. Neil Houtzel. Killing it with the intros. Guys, who's with me? Pizzas are a lot like blowjobs. Best when given to you by an old Italian man in a rundown building. 
Right? Am I right? <laughs> but let's get real. If you guys are like me, you enjoy laying in your bed shirtless and then sneezing up into the air and holding your arms out like a perverted Christ figure as the snot then rains down upon you. I can tell not everyone's on board. And for those who aren't, may I suggest, try it. It's liberating is what it is. You feel like Andy Dufresne at the end of Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> free at last, free at last. I think I have too much privilege to say that. I don't know, I'm not sure. Um, what else? You ever think God isn't listening to your prayers because he's too busy dealing with 14-year-old girls on their period? <laughs> Fuck you, Margaret. We all got problems. You telling me that takes precedence over my, like, a possession charge? Yeah. I hear that phone call. Are you there? God, it's me, Neil. This is my one phone call. Sorry, Neil, there's a 14-year-old girl in Minnesota experiencing nature's gift. Priorities, son. So I was tendering in front of my grandma today. She was naturally curious, looking over my shoulder. I was like, Neil, what you doing here? Like, uh, you wouldn't get a grandma, don't worry about it. She kept persisting, so I finally broke and like, all right, uh, it's this uh, terrible website where you uh, judge women completely based on their uh, appearance without knowing anything about them. And she's like, oh, like segregation. <laughs> I, I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> Grandma knows what's going on. So I've been trying to be a, more of a baller in life. There are people like that, right? But it's hard making the kind of money I make. Because what it consists of is me walking up to Kroger clerks and saying, Excuse me, ma'am, uh, which flavor of ramen do you think Jay-Z would prefer? <laughs> It's the shrimp. He likes the shrimp. He actually does the shrimp and then he takes a little bit of a beef packet and pours that in there. Not too much. And he stirs that in. It's a baller move if I've ever heard one. I gave the Consumer Opinion Center a call the other day. If you're not familiar with them, um, but they hold research groups for tobacco. They give you products and they're like, uh, this doesn't taste like cancer, does it? Stuff like that. But what they don't tell you is that there's a very lengthy 20 minute phone interview process to sign up where they ask you a bunch of arbitrary questions. One of which is, uh, pretend you're a celebrity and pitch me a pack of Camel cigarettes and whatever falls out of your mouth at that moment, they have to sit there and listen. <laughs> so you can go the route I went, like, all right, uh, hi, I'm famous big game hunter slash notorious big dick hatter. Yeah. Oh, well. Right after I get done murdering a tiger, there's only one thing I like to do. I like to hollow out its body and get inside of it and crawl around in its skin. And I roam the plains of the Serengeti like a six and a half foot tall tiger vigilante. I call myself El Tigre Magnifico. Why my Spanish is not important. You know what I do then? I have sex with your girlfriend. That's right. I fuck your girlfriend and she likes it. You think she's going to say no to a six and a half foot tiger man? No! No one's saying no to that. Get in there every time. But when that's all said and done, there's only one thing I like to do to relax. I stand outside Planned Parenthood and I yell at teenagers as they go inside. 
Well, you're having, you're having the worst day of your life? I'm having the best day of my life. Are you still wearing the tiger suit? Of course I'm still wearing the tiger suit. I never take that shit off. Stupid question. And I also, you know, can't hold cigarettes. Yeah, they call me back, guys. Thanks a lot. Guys, that was Neil. Are you ready for your last comment of the evening? Yeah! I am too. I, I've waited months to see this guy. He moved, he moved from here to New York. He He's like the next, never mind, he's not the next Louis C.K. He's not, he's not the next anything. He's the next guy making your sushi in New York. Uh, but I really fucking love this dude, and I'm very glad that he could be here tonight, because he has hosted Mojo's probably more than anyone else has hosted Mojo's, including me. I don't know if that's true. But he did it in a dress once, and that's more than I can say. Uh, his name is Patrick fucking Busey. Yeah! Hey, hi everybody. Uh, I have hosted this mic a lot of times, and uh, to get into like preparation for it, I had my anxiety that's always there. It's like a mountain that stands beside me, and I got wasted drunk. Because that's what you fucking do when you're here. You just get drunk, and you go VCU at the end of it, and everybody claps. I don't know, I shouldn't be like as anxiety ridden as I am. Like I'm not shaking right now, but once I get off stage I'll probably throw up. I've already like anxiety shat in that bathroom like four times tonight. Uh, so once I get off, you know, something will happen and y'all can videotape and put it on YouTube. That's a cool thing that young people do nowadays, I guess, I don't know. Um, but it, it's weird because like I'm anxiety ridden I shouldn't be like I'm a, I'm a white male. I heard that those are supposed to have, like, bursting confidence to do whatever they want in the world. You know, just be racist and crazy and kill babies or something like that. I don't kill babies. I love babies. I have a niece. She's beautiful. Um, but, like, I'm wearing clothes that I've worn for the last ten years. This is a band that hasn't been a band in five years. But, like, back when I was getting this shit, I was like, this is a good look. I'm going to stick with it. And I haven't fucking moved past it since. And I blame my parents, really. You know? Because they should have been there for me. They should have just been hyping me up like, you know your ABC's at three. You're going to do it, man. Just get out there and be you. And they didn't. They're from Long Island in New York. I don't know if y'all know that place, but if like, you ever heard I'm walking here, that's where that shit came from. Um, and they never did anything for me. I was like trying to dig deep into my history recently and I was just like, let's figure out what happened. And I went back to my earliest memory. My earliest memory is me lost at a pumpkin patch for two fucking hours. <laughs> two hours before they found me. And there's a photo, there's evidence of me at this pumpkin patch, and I'm far away crying. <laughs> so rather than come up to me and be like, you're all right, man, we got you. Instead, my new parents were just like, let's take a photo of him. So if the police can't find him next time, we have something that's current. Shit's weird. I don't know. I moved to New York recently. That was like a good thing that I did in my life. Um, I'm anxiety ridden and I'm fearful. I have anxiety attacks all the time. So what did I do? I moved from the easiest place to live in America, which is Richmond, Virginia, to New York City. And I have had some monumental, colossal anxiety attacks up there. And it's not like here where you do it in your room, 
where nobody can find you until hours later and they're like, here's some Advil, chill the fuck out. There it's in very public forums, like the G train into Manhattan, where there's a million people walking by, and I just had a crazy panic attack where I was buckled over, and I was just like, this is gonna be the one that takes me. This is the panic attack that's causing my chest to cave in at this point. But then I looked up and I saw that the lyrics to Drake's Hotline Bling were written on the wall, but they were written incorrectly. So I, I took a little picture, put it on Instagram, and said, fake ass Drake. And then it felt like I was gonna die right there. And I was like, oh no. If I die, this is the last thing I did. And then when my parents searched my computer and try and figure out like what I was doing at the time period, they'll realize that earlier that day I downloaded all of Drake's CDs. So they'll just be like, look at him, trying to be real hip at the end there. Good for him. They'll just like put on my grave, started from the bottom, now I'm back. That is a cheesy fucking joke. But I love drinking R&B, so I gotta tell it. I don't know, I even wrote my thing on my hand because I'm drunk, and I don't know what that says. Okay, um, I feel grown though lately. I feel very grown. It was a couple months ago before I left for New York that I voted in something that wasn't a presidential election. And I was like, I feel fucking mature now. I don't know what I voted for, but I went there. It was a Monday, my one day off, which I usually spend recovering from a hangover, hanging out with my cat, and watching HBO. Because that's what you fucking do, people. Catch up on Silicon Valley and be like, I should've gotten to computers. You know? But that day, my girlfriend was just like, you need to get the fuck out of bed and go vote, because that shit is a block down. So I got out of bed. I didn't want to do it. I got in my car, because I'm fucking mature, okay? And as I was driving there, I was getting pumped up. I was like, I'm about to get here, do my fucking civic duty, be the change I want to be in the world and all that bullshit. And then I got there and the lady met me outside and she was just like, this is going to be a quick one. And I was like, don't you worry, madam. I'm going to get in there and I'm not voting for who the fuck you're voting for. And I got in there, I got to the fucking podium. I was real pumped. I was just like, mm, I'm here, energized. And I looked down. And everybody in Mechanicsville, Virginia, was running unopposed. <laughs> so I got out of my bed for no goddamn reason. <laughs> and then, like, I brought the Xerox sheet over to the guy, and he was having trouble putting it in there. And I was just like, throw it out, man. <laughs> it doesn't fucking matter. Who gives a shit? But they give you a sticker that says, I voted. And if you people are upstanding, as I hope you are, y'all know that if you have an I voted sticker, you are the shit the rest of the day. Woo! You're just talking nonsense to people like, go fuck yourself. Yeah, I mean, this Philly cheesesteak, because I voted and I'm American. And that's just Philly, baby. And it turns out, that if you're like dirty and a shitty person like me, you can wear that sticker for like five days because you're not washing clothes. All the end of that joke is, is to tell y'all that I'm just dirty as fuck. And it's a beautiful thing. Like I said, 10 year old shirt still looks blue as fuck, doesn't it? Yeah, because I wash right, okay? I, uh, 
I dated a girl now, and uh, she's in the back. She's very annoyed that she's here at the moment, but she uh, she's there. And uh, I dated somebody, and I was just like, what am I gonna do? Because all of my hobbies include alcohol. I'm just an alcoholic. Like, before I left for New York, I was just here hanging out. I hosted a bunch of shows just because I was drunk and I was here. I was a fucking resident of Mojo's. And I was like, let me figure it out. I gotta think hard. What am I gonna do? And I realized that what you can do as a date, besides going to a bar, is you can go to a winery. <laughs> And it turns out that wine at a winery costs the exact same amount that it does at a bar. But if you're dressed like me, you can make old white people uncomfortable for free. <laughs> and that shit is beautiful. You know, you're like, this date's going well, I can leave her there. I found this old dude, he's my grandpa now, because I'm going to talk to him and talk him up and he's going to adopt me. And you go over there and you sit on his fucking kneecap and you're just like, how you doing, baby? And he's like, oh, I'm at the end of the rope here. And I'm like, you still have five fucking years ahead of you. Golden ass years ahead of you. But then it always ends in dementia or some shit and everybody gets sad. I don't know, that's not funny. Dementia's not fucking funny. Don't bring that shit up. You know, I just have a mic and I'm dumb and drunk. I, uh, I moved to New York for an odd reason. I moved to New York to do comedy, but I also moved to New York because uh, I'm $14,000 in credit debt. Because I lived fucking hard when I was 20 to 24. Um, and I moved there because, like, I paid $1,500 to live here. I paid $300 to live there. And I moved up there and I was like, maybe it was the friends that I was making. Maybe I need to figure this shit out. So I started befriending these people called Wiccans. I don't know if y'all know what that is, but if you do, it's just like a person that watched a shit ton of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And then was like, I can do that. You know? And I went up to my friend and I was like, yo, I'm like 14 grand in debt right now. What are you going to do for me? How are you going to help me? And he was just like, don't worry about that shit. Draw a pentagram on the ground right here. Boom, magic marker. That shit's not coming out forever. Okay? And then you're going to pile up three rocks, a tower of rocks right here. And I'm going to stand over here and watch you try and set that on fire for about 15 minutes. And I was like, that works? And he was like, maybe. And I was like, where did you learn that beautiful amount of knowledge from? And he was just like, you know, science class in college. And I was like, I forgot your parents were vegan and you were homeschooled, motherfucker. Thank you so much. That's how I ended my set in a beautiful way. Please bring up Tom Hall, who made this show great for two fucking years. Give it up for him, people. Thank you all so much. Have a good night. Hey guys, that's it. That was your last comic. Uh, all right. Uh, that's it. Go home. No, but yeah, thank you for uh, staying here throughout the night and listening to everyone and making two years of Mojo's great. Uh, all right, now I'm done. Goodbye.